Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fino Field. It is state tournament baseball on HCAM television in Hopkinton and also WACA TV in Ashland as Ashland Post 77 gets ready to take on Somerset Hathaway Post 228 here in the first round of the state tournament. It is a beautiful sunny day here for baseball. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera, and this should be a great game between two very good teams. Let's take a look at the lineup for Ashland Post 77, and they are going to have Jake Obid bat first and play left field. Ronan Bates will bat second and play second base. Jackson Horning will bat third and play shortstop. Ben Thomas will bat cleanup and play right field. Zach Pesson will bat fifth and play first base. Louis Rossi will bat sixth and play third base. Tom Ansi will bat seventh and pitch. Sean Jouette will catch and bat eighth. And Brad Seymour will bat ninth and play center field. Ashland is the away team for this game here today. And of course, the state tournament games are nine innings long. So no more uh, seven inning games, nine innings today here at Fino Field. Larry, are you excited to be here or what? Absolutely, and I hope the Ashland fans are excited. Been waiting all year for this, or well, they've been waiting, waiting many years for this to get into the big dance, so to speak. And we've been waiting to get a good camera angle all year long, and now we have one. We certainly do. You can't get any better than this. Nice uh, bird's eye view of the field here behind home plate. Let's take a look at the Somerset Diamond, and we'll talk a little bit about this Somerset team that they will be playing today. Luke Feria is the catcher. Devin Lynch over at first base. At second base, it's Lucas Souza. The shortstop, Jose Martinez. And the third baseman is uh, Lucas Barabu and from left to right, it is Jake Meehan, Matt Shea, and Jeremy Thibetot. A couple of uh, tongue-twisting names in there, uh, Larry. You did excellent. Well, that an extra zero to your paycheck, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, Larry, you were at the Andover game in which Ashland ended up taking that victory to advance to this state tournament. Can you talk about that game? Uh, what a performance by Sean Babineau. Absolutely. He had uh, 20 first pitch strikes out of 27 hitters. So he told me before the game he likes to get up in the count, and that way he can do anything with the next pitch. He had uh, an incredible pickoff of a runner and even had a experienced 20-year uh, manager from American Legion who had coached Sean Hannigan, the former Red Sox catcher and Tampa Bay catcher, yelling back over to first base because of his deception with his pickoff move. Did it twice, actually, in a row. So there was a uh, little small ball play. Tom Onzi missed the sign, but got down a bunt uh, to get the first run in. And then there was a few singles mixed in, and it was 3 nothing game. Babineau was really, really efficient. 91 pitches, my understanding. So that's a wrap from the end over Ashland game. Yeah, it was certainly a, a great game and another dominant pitching performance by Babineau. He's pitched 19 in the third this season and has a zero ERA, just to show you how dominant he has been. The pitcher today for post 77, Tom Onsey, has had a very nice season on the mound for Ashland. He's pitched 21 and two thirds of an inning and he has a 161 ERA, certainly the number two guy in this rotation. Uh, Larry, what have you thought about Tom Onsey this season on the mound? Well, I've known him from Little League playing in Hopkinton. He always possessed a good fastball. We'll know real early whether he's on uh, if he gets that fastball over or strikes. If he doesn't, it might be a long afternoon. And as for Somerset, uh, you mentioned this uh, a little bit this week, Larry, but they have really strong pitching, such as uh, Lucas Souza, who took home the victory in the Attleboro game. It was a two to one victory, certainly a pitcher's duel. And that one, another guy they've relied heavily upon is Chase Stafford, who has had a big part of this season. He gave up five hits and one run in eight innings, striking out nine and retiring 14 of the last 15 South Attleboro 
hitters in that playoff matchup. And then the guy pitching today, Jake Solomon, tossed a five hitter. Somerset beat Norton three to two in the rubber game of their semifinal season. And the opener of that series, Souza's complete game included 10 strikeouts and one earned run allowed. So strong pitching for this Somerset team. And Larry, that seems like what they've relied upon all season long. Absolutely, I think based on the stats that I reviewed prior to the game, they have three pitchers with a two or under ERA. I may be wrong, you can correct me. And uh, it's going to be another great pitching matchup today between Jake Solomon and Tom Odsey. I'm expecting a low scoring game here uh, this afternoon, Larry, but with these well, two pitchers going. I don't know who's eligible, who's eligible or who's not eligible for Somerset. Uh, Babineau appears to be playing at Nakona or a Futures game. He'd be ineligible anyway, throwing 91 pitches on Thursday night. So we'll just see. Who do you have down as the starting pitcher, Souza? Uh, it's Solomon, Solomon. for uh, Somerset, Ansi for post 77. And I think uh, most of this pitching staff is going to be available for Somerset because uh, from what I understand, they've had a couple days off just like Ashland has. Their last game was on Wednesday. But why don't we uh, take a look at the bracket to get you filled in on all the state championship action that is happening at Fino Field. They played one game already. That started at 9.30 in the morning. Braintree defeated Shrewsbury 6-5 to and what was a thrilling game to start off the state tournament. This is the second game of the day, Ashland and Somerset. The third game of the day will be Northampton and Barnstable. And then, of course, the fourth game will be the host team, Milford, hosting Newton. That is scheduled for a 7.30 p.m. start time. The way it'll work for post-77, if they lose this game, they will be playing tomorrow afternoon, 12.30 start time. If they win this game, they'll be playing tomorrow night under the lights at 7.30 p.m. And this tournament, it's five days straight, so you keep winning, you keep playing. It's going to be uh, certainly a long run for whatever team uh, takes this home, Larry. You're really going to have to have your uh, pitchers ready to go, and you're going to have to rely on your starters to go deep in the games, especially with these nine-inning games. No question, no question about that. It is double elimination, so first time uh, you take your second loss, you go home. So you want to play one game at a time and see how far you can go. And we're going to set it to the field now where they're going to do the national anthem, and we'll keep rolling as we get ready for this one. There you have it, the National Anthem. We are ready for baseball. It's Ashland Legion Post 77 Baseball State Tournament action coming up next on HCAM Television in Hopkinton and WACA-TV in Ashland. It should be a great game. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.
We are set for Ashland Legion Post 77 Baseball from Fino Field in the wonderful town of Milford, Massachusetts. It's Ashland and Somerset stepping into the batter's box to start off this state tournament game is Jake Obed. We are ready for nine innings of baseball. Jake Solomon deals the first pitch, hit in the left field, and that is going to drop just fair. And nope, it's going to be foul. There we go. I thought that was foul. He kept running. Yeah, the umpire didn't hold him up. And right, there was no sign from the ump, but with that said, it's 0-1. Obid will step back into the batter's box. Got a good piece on that one. Certainly did, and I thought it was going to go foul the way it was curving out there. Solomon set to deal. Gets the sign he likes and delivers, and there's strike two. Nice breaking pitch. That left center field gap is a mile away. I don't know what the distance is, but you hit it way out there. You can run all day long. Obid awaits the pitch. Falls that one away. And Larry Obid's uh, another guy that could maybe come into this game if Onsi gets into trouble and relieve him on the mound. He actually leads the team in innings pitch, 31 and a third, and a 268 ERA. Hitting wise, a 268 batting average on this season, 10 RBIs. 21 runs scored. He's a good, strong kid. And hasn't uh, hasn't gone yard yet, to my knowledge. But it would be him, I think, first out of the uh, uh, corral there to relieve Onzi, and then it would be probably Rengi, takes Dylan O'Leary. Takes a ball there. Yeah, and that's depending on what the rotation is. Well, we know Sean Babineau is going to go tomorrow night, according to Coach Johnson. But I think it's just so important to win this uh, first game. And he did draw the walk, so Obit is aboard to start things off. You know, Tom, I think that was a hit by pitch. As the I umpire believe so, came, yep. came out. And the Somerset coach does not like that call. That'll bring up Ronan Bates. Uh, that's a judgment call by the umpire as to whether he made an attempt to get out of the way. He's not going to overturn the call. Team manager for Somerset is David Olmschneider, assisted by Randy Cordero, Chris Duart, Chris Rankin, and Ed Souza. Any more? That's it. Okay. Bates steps in with Obid aboard, checking at first. Obid slides back safely. Obid with a pretty good on-base percentage, 414 on-base percentage for Obid. Ronan Bates hitting a 232 this season, takes a strike there. You know, Somerset is down by Fall River, New Bedford area, Swansea, hometown of one Jerry Remy, who we wish well in his fifth bout with lung cancer. Checking at first, runner back safe. Yeah, we certainly hope he's back in the booth soon over at Nesson. He can take my color job any day. Yeah, I'd give it to him. Yeah. It, it is the rem dog after all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think you're better. Hit in the air, a high fly ball, shallow center field. Ranging under it, making the catch is Matt Shea for the first out of the inning. Obid stays over at first base. That'll bring up Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Yeah, the Somerset outfield is playing it straight away. I don't think they have a spray chart on the Ashland post 77. But Jackson Hornung has got really nice power, and he's really quick. Obid once again leading off of first base. That one is up high, 1-0. and Ashland post 77, of course, their team manager is Richard Powell. Coaches Derek Johnson and Andrew Keim. And what a turnaround for head coach Derek Johnson and this post-77 team. Unbelievable. From 3-15 and 15 last season to the state tournament this year, it doesn't get any more impressive than that as far as the turnaround. See how open Jackson's stance is. He's got his foot on the uh, chalk in the batter's box last time for the last pitch anyway. He had half his foot out of the batter's box. Nobody complained and the umpire didn't see it, so 
Jackson's hitting a 273 this season, checking on Obid once again. He's back safe. Corning has driven in eight runs, scored 13. And awaits the one and one. Hits this one in the air over to left field. And he certainly got a lot of height on that one, but it is foul. That might have cleared the fence if it stayed straight, Larry. Good power. Yep. A lot of balls go into dead man's land, literally dead man's land over to the left field. This pitcher, Salman, doesn't seem to have a particularly great move. Noticing a lot of breaking pitches from Salman here early on. Obed leading off of first, and Hornin gets a piece of this one. That's going to drop into right field. Obed coming around second base, over to third he goes, and it's a one-out single for Hornin. Runners on the corners for post 77. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Coach Johnson lets Jackson go, watching that move that uh, Salmon has and the tendency to throw breaking pitches, which gives him a one or two tenths of an extra second. We'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder, leading the team with a 380 batting average, a 508 on base percentage. This is the guy you want at the plate right now. Wind up and the pitch. That one a little bit outside, and that is going to allow Horning to advance up to second base. Very nice job of reading the down angle by Jackson Hornung. See, as you see it out of the pitcher's hand, it's going to go down the dirt. It takes a uh, hell of an effort by the catcher to throw a runner like Jackson out. Ben Thomas has driven in 18 runs this season as he falls that one away and scored 13. Also has six doubles and two triples. And a whole lot of power. Both runners taking a slight lead. Head coach Derek Johnson over there down the third baseline, coaching at third base. That one's fouled away. He's down the count. But he's got speed on the bases, too, Mr. Thomas. He certainly does. One and two now. Both runners leading. Selman from the stretch. Looks over at third base and deals upstairs. Two and two. Two up next is Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Both runners leading once again. Solomon glares over at third base and deals a breaking pitch. Hit up the middle. That'll get by the shortstop. Obit around to score. And just behind him is Hornung. And it is 2-0 post-77. A two-RBI single for the cleanup man, Ben Thomas. That ball had eyes right up the middle. No chance by either Martinez or Souza. That'll bring up Zach Pesson, who's hitting a 237 on the season, 408 on base percentage. He's driven in three, scored seven. And he's a good bunner. Post 77 as a team, hitting a 262. But lately, they have really ramped up the offense. That pitch outside, 1 0. You know, Tom, I'm, you know, I hate to be nasty here, or, but uh, Salma doesn't have much on, a, on his fastball. Certainly does, and as swinging strike there, runner taking off from first, he is safe, and that's going to get into center field, but Thomas will stay put at second base. There was quite a collision there. We hope Thomas is okay as he collided with Suze a little bit, but he is up and seems to be just fine. A stolen base for the cleanup man. Pesson will step back into the batter's box, a one-and-one one count. Runner leading off of second, a breaking pitch, that'll oh, hit him. I'm going to be sure that the Somerset manager comes out. It Lap. looks like he made no attempt to get out of the way. He just wore it. And I wonder if Solomon, you know, is tired because he's pitched uh, quite a bit lately for Somerset. We'll have to see what the leash is with him, but so far not too good. we got to get a hold of the pitch count rules because – Similar to Little League, and there's a bump by Rossi. Yeah, right up the third base side. He's going to beat that one out. Everybody's safe. Base is loaded. Lewis Rossi does it again, showing off that speed up the line. And he just added on to his 323 batting average 
and 452 on base percentage coming into this game. My little dirt dog, Louis Rossi. He's got a great sense of humor. He takes coaching really, really well. He's come a long way this season, especially defensively. He's had his struggles a couple times this year as we're going to get a conference on the mound here with the str struggling uh, Jake Solomon and the Somerset coaching staff. But uh, he's had his struggles at third base defensively this season, but he has certainly come a long way overall as a complete player. As Tom Ansi set to step in. And Ansi, to everybody's shock, has contributed quite a bit with the bat. And he's got a chance here to uh, tack on some insurance runs for himself when he goes to toe the rubber out there in the bottom of the first inning. Yep. And 15 at bats, a 467 batting average, 471 on base percentage. All runners leading off, bases juiced for Ashland. This is hit in the air over to left field, battling the sun and making the catch for the out is Meehan, but a run will score for post 77. Ben Thomas comes around on the sacrifice flyout. It is 3-0 Ashland. He is one of my favorites, Sean Jewett. Played all year behind the plate. Really, really improved his skills. A chance to add on to that lead here with two outs. Runners still on first and second. Jewett has been outstanding behind the plate. That pitch outside, 1-0. He's got to work on a few things, but I'm sure his Holliston coach won't throw him out of the lineup. No, I don't think so. 265 batting average, 400 on base percentage for the Holliston high schooler as that one grabs the corner. Yeah, I notice a lot of the uh, Ashland hitters are with the start with the open stance. I don't know whether it's a coaching thing or the copycat thing or what, but. And he will tattoo this ball into left field. That'll drop in and that is a fair ball. And a runner is going to come around to score. And that is going to be an RBI base hit for Jewett, who ends up at second base, an RBI double for the catcher. 4-0, post-77. Rossi moves up to third. Pesson is in for the run. I'm sort of shocked here, Tom. Based on the numbers, you don't know until you see a kid pitch, but with those low ERAs, thought this would be a duel. Post-77 has batted around as the ninth hitter in the lineup, Brad's center fielder takes a strike. Runners on second and third. That one low. And I really wonder if Selman will be out there next inning after struggling big time here in this first. All depends on the pitch count. Yep. And See? Babineau is not available even though he pitched on Thursday he threw 91 so that's almost a hit by pitch that one inside Seymour 200 batting average 364 on base percentage but provides some very solid defense in the outfield as well I think Brad Seymour is complaining that he got hit by that pitch on his shirt that's what coach Johnson was watching walking down towards the home plate umpire for umpire not agreeing no Two and two now. Four nothing post 77. And we are still in the top of the first. A rally to start off state tournament action for Ashland. Both runners leading on second and third. That ball is going to get by the catcher. Runner from third is going to come around for the fifth post 77 run. Lewis Rossi scores on the wild pitch. I don't Jewett. know whether he bounced the breaking ball there or. He just uh, bounced it up there, but catcher had a difficult time finding the ball, which kept Jewett at third base. Yep. Jewett up to third. Seymour will now have a full count. Two outs, but five runs in for post 77. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs it goes, and he draws the walk. Back around we go. Salmon is really struggling out there. I'm surprised that there hasn't been at least one more conference at this point. This is the state tournament here. I mean, this first game is so important to get the W as Obid steps in. 
Well, the Ashland bench seems to be quiet, but they got to be happy in there. This is hit in the air, deep to center field, and that is going to be taken by the win. That'll drop in for a hit. One run is in to score. Second run going to try to score. Here comes Seymour, and he will score as well. It is a two RBI base hit for Jake Obed, and it is seven nothing Ashland post 77. You notice that power? Crushed it. And the wind taking that one, it started going to direct center. The wind took it slightly to the left. Bates will step back in. His second at bat here in this top of the first. Well, I think uh, Ashland came here to play today. I'll say. I was speaking to Ronan before last game. Uh, for you that didn't catch that on YouTube or HK or WACA TV, uh, he's going to go to UMass Lowell, and he's going to try and walk on. And why not? I'll give him a shot. Yeah. If not, play club ball. 1-1. One, one. And this is lined right at the second baseman who will make the catch. And finally, that is the third out of the top of the first. But Ashland, post-77, scores seven runs and has a very comfortable lead as we will head to the bottom of the first next on WACA-TV and HCAM Television. Bottom of the first inning, and what a long top of the first it was. Seven runs for Ashland, post-77, as Tom Ansi will get his first look at this Somerset batting order. Let's take a look at the Somerset batting order. Matt Shea, the center fielder, stepping in to start things off. Jeremy Tibetau, the right fielder, batting second. Devin Lynch, the first baseman, batting third. Luke Feria, the catcher, batting cleanup. Jose Martinez, the shortstop, batting fifth. Lucas Souza, the second baseman, batting sixth. Lucas Barabee, the third baseman, batting seventh. Tim Silva, the designated hitter, batting eighth. And Jake Meehan, the center fielder, batting ninth. As Shea steps in, and Tom Ansi set to deal. We'll take a look at the post-77 diamond in just a moment. Yeah, go watch out for a little kid who bats first, left-hander. See if he shows bunt at all. Fastball for pitch number one inside. Let's take a look at the post-77 diamond. Sean Jouette behind home plate. Zach Pesson over at first base. Ronan Bates, the second baseman. Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Louis Rossi, the third baseman. That pitch inside, 2-0. From left to right, Jake Obed, Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas. Onzi not throwing quite three-quarter. He's sort of almost sidearm, not quite sidearm, sort of in between. That was a fastball for a strike there, two and one. Onzi working quickly as that one's fouled away. That'll even up the count. Whatever nerves he might have had. Step on, on the rubber must have dissipated pretty quickly with the seven runs put on the board. Oh, I'm sure. And that is such a big sigh of relief, having a lead like that. So that one's followed back towards us. Off the backstop. I don't think Anzi will go all nine innings, so... It'll be reliever by committee, I have a feeling, just like it was in the first game between Shrewsbury and Braintree. Well, that's another thing, too. These games, nine innings, a couple innings longer, and that makes a huge difference. So when you have a lead like Post 77 has right now, that really helps out a lot as far as pitching. Full count pitch. That one is low, and Shea draws the walk. Jeremy Tibetot, the right fielder, will step in. A good size young man. You always got to watch out for those leadoff uh, lead hitters. They tend to be pretty quick. Take a look at Anzi's move. Runner leading off of first. Outside, that one goes. 1 and 0. Oh. Todd looking down the line at the coach. David Olmschneider. There's a strike. That was a get me over strike. One and one. 
on the five foot 11, 190 pound right fielder. Swing strike there. And a runner going to take off from first, and they have him caught. The ball got into center field, but he just goes back to first, so no harm there. One and two count on Tibetot. I don't know what the runner saw, whether he, and why he put the brakes on halfway down. He certainly would have made it, but I think uh, the throw from Jouette came very quickly, quickly than, uh, more quick than Shea imagined, so panicked and went back. Checking at first, runner slides back. I don't think that was Anzi's best move, to be honest with you. Why show him it now? Right. Anzi's set to deal. Nasty breaking pitch there. And that is strike three, out number one. That will bring up Devin Lynch, the first baseman. Steps in, runner leading off of first, fouled away. This will determine a lot, the three, four, and five hitters, if we happen to see them all in this inning. If uh, Tom Onzi can dispose of them, he'll feel pretty good walking back in the dugout. Certainly will, as that is fouled away towards the post-77 dugout. Dylan O'Leary throwing that ball back. Leading off of first, one out in the inning. Swinging strike there. And that is the second strikeout for Tom Otzi. Two away, Luke Ferrier will step in. Well, the number three hitter didn't look particularly good at that at bat, but it's only one at bat. Nice. Shea at first. Tom Otzi, took, oops, sorry, Larry. Took three or four hard steps towards second base and then put on the brakes. Tom Otzi now has 21 strikeouts on the season with the two here today. And 21 and two thirds pitched coming into this game. Checking at first, runner back safe. That was a little bit better. Pitchers like to have about three pickoff moves. One really bad. As this is driven into left field, that'll drop in front of Obid for a base hit. A two-out single for Feria. Shea moves up to second. Jose Martinez, the shortstop, to step in. Looks for the sign from the coach down the third baseline. Both runners leading, leg lift and the pitch. And therefore a strike. Looks like Anzi has uh, found the strike zone here. Both runners leading once again. Anzi looks at second and deals. That is fouled away down the first base side. 0-2. Milford post 59 did an incredible job getting this field in shape. Oh, they certainly did. The field is perfect. Swinging strike there, and that is the third strikeout for Tom Onsey. That'll wrap up the bottom of the first to the top of the second. We go post 77, leading seven to nothing. Same pitcher. Top of the second inning. Post 77 coming back up to the plate after a seven run top of the first. Three, four, and five do up. Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Ben Thomas, the right fielder. And Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Jake Solomon, the starter, still out there for Somerset. As Horning will step in, he singled in the first inning and scored a run. One of the seven runs. And Coach Johnson all smiles walking into the dugout after that first inning. Can't ask for anything better than that. Better get his helmet on to run down to third base to do his coaching thing. I think he usually waits until someone's on base to head down there. Swing strike. 
Breaking pitch. There he, there he goes. goes. Yep. There he goes. He hasn't washed his pants in six weeks, I don't think. Superstition, man. All these kids are, majority of these kids don't wash their pants. Strike. 0-2 oh now. Jackson Horning out of Ashland High School. Has been very solid at shortstop all season long. 273 batting average as well. And this is popped high in the air, over to the right side, foul territory and out of the reach of anybody. And that went off a bleacher. Some of the Milford Post 59 players here taking in the action. You see tonight. Alex Reynolds over there? Yep. Hopkins and catcher heading off to Babson. Quite a few hillers on that Post 59 roster. And perhaps this Ashland team will meet up with Milford Post. That would be a great game. And we'll, we'll go over the scenarios in just a moment. As that one is outside, one and two. So if Ashland and Milford both win their games, they will meet up tomorrow night under the lights at 7.30. If they both lose, they'll meet up. But if one of them wins and the other one loses, they won't meet up. Milford playing Newton. Well, the Milford fans will come down in droves for that game. And I'm a little disappointed in the Ashland crowd. I don't know what you can see down the first baseline, but. Yeah, I certainly expected a few more people as Horning takes strike three, one away. It'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder, who hit a two RBI single in the first inning. Also racked up a stolen base. His two RBI single drove in the first two runs of the seven, Ashland scored in the top of the first. Jake Obit and Jackson Horning scored on the hit. Solomon set to deal, leg lift and the pitch down low. Ferrier, the catcher for a big kid, doesn't have a particularly strong arm. Watching him throw down a second base. I think Jewett's got a better gun than Ferrier. We gotta wait for a runner to get on base to see if Coach Johnson's gonna let the players loose a little bit with a big lead. Line up and the pitch, just outside. Well, the Somerset team has some good hitters, so you certainly can't take your foot totally off the gas. This is the best in the state after all. That one outside. Three and O oh count on Thomas. He'll have the take sign here, gotta believe. Play the percentages. Wind up and the pitch in there for a strike. Solomon gets the sign he likes and deals. Fouled away. Full count now. That ball's a goner. Anything you hit over to our left is a gone ball. I think there's a graveyard over there or something. I don't know. Nobody wants to jump the fence. Solomon gets the sign he likes and deals. That one outside, and that is going to be a walk for Ben Thomas. We'll bring up Zach Pesson with one on and one out. Pesson was hit by a pitch his last time up in the first inning. Ended up scoring the fourth post-77 run of the seven-run rally. Solomon looks over at first and deals. There's a strike. Uh, we have Zelmo Sosiski, Alex Reynolds. Not sure whether Dawson McMillan is there from Hopkins and High, play on post 59. Checking at first, Thomas slides back safe. Ben ought to be able to read that pickoff move pretty easy. Solomon set the deal. Runner taking off from first, and he will have the easy steal as Feria behind the plate briefly lost the ball. Pitch was a little bit low and ended up going into the dirt. So runner on second now with one out. What's the mercy rule uh, in the playoffs, Tom? We were told uh, by the great press box staff here that it is a 10 run lead after seven. 
As this is down the third base side, that'll get through for a base hit. And that will put runners on the corners with one out as Thomas advances to third. Single for Pesson. It'll bring up Lewis Rossi, who had a nice base hit his last time up, a single. And Solomon starting to struggle once again. And uh, it's great they're keeping track of the pitch count here. We were told uh, that Solomon threw 34 pitches in that seven run first inning for Ashland, checking at first runner back safe. Tom Otzi threw 19 for post 77. Solomon's got to watch out for the runner on third base. He doesn't throw the ball away in an attempt to get a, a pickoff. The bunt pulled back. Suicide. And, yep, there it is. And let's see if they get him the throw to third. They, it, they don't get him. They call him safe. Pesson rides into second base. Wow. R Rossi missed it uncharacteris uncharacteristically, but the ball was outside. He'd need a big, long fishing pole to put the – bat on the ball but yeah, how about that you got the seven run lead but you're still trying to manufacture some runs you're keeping <laughs> the foot totally on the gas I like this approach Larry uh, absolutely uh, we talked about that earlier today before broadcast that uh, they got to be aggressive but again taking a look at the staff ERA I'm really surprised breaking pitch upstairs Salman might, might not might not make it to the third inning. The rate he's going. I'm surprised he's in after that first inning, to be honest with you. Wind up and the pitch. And try to hold the swing, but didn't. One and two. The umpire having a discussion with the catcher about. I'm not quite sure what. But Barry's been very busy behind the play. A lot of wild pitches from Salomon as well. Come on, Big Lou. Solomon from the stretch. Lewis Rossi looking for his second base hit. And we'll put this in fair territory. That'll get by the shortstop. And another post-77 run is in to score. Hit or error, Larry? Base hit in the hole. I agree. Been tough for Martinez to get that one. RBI single, and yeah, he tried to uh, backhand that one with the glove, but the glove was just above the ball. Pesson is up to third, 8 nothing post-77. Tom Otzi looking to add on to the damage. I think you got to take a look at Rossi over at first base, whether he goes on a leg lift, try to swipe a bag. Salman noticing that. First and third, and this will trickle up the third base side foul. Throw uh, from the third base side, got away from the pitcher. Coach Johnson pays no mind to that. Not charged with an error. <laughs> that one just outside. Rossi one. possesses good speed, so there's only one out. Rossi hit a sacrifice RBI flyout his last time up. The HCAM Weather Center reading at 83 degrees and partly cloudy, no chance of rain, which is what I like to see. Down the third base side, that gets through. That's a fair ball. Another post-77 run is in to score. And Rossi rounded second but went back to the bag. Certainly made the right judgment call there, but it is an RBI base hit for Otzi. Johnson playing at station to station. I think uh, Lewis would have made it to third. Might have been a close play, but maybe worth taking the chance. Sean Jouett steps in, 9-0. Runner leading off of second. There's a strike. He let that meatball go. Well, Larry, I mentioned that their offense has been better as of late, but it is very good today. <laughs> Unbelievable. That one low. Yeah, and they're not power hitters, so they're just getting singles, doubles. Aggressive on the bases. It's the way they play. There's, there's so much speed in this lineup, though. Whenever they get a couple guys on base, they try to create as much havoc as possible, and a lot of the times they do so, as there's a breaking pitch for a strike. It's not a very tight breaking ball. It's sort of a rolling breaking ball. 
One and two count. One out, two on, two more in. A 9 nothing lead for post 77. And this is up the middle. A nice catch by the shortstop to throw to second. Not in time, but a good defensive play by Jose Martinez. Two away. Looked like uh, Rossi uh, was out of breath after that slide. Maybe he knocked the wind out of him because he dove hard. Souza wasn't too happy. He was quite demonstrative to the umpire, thinking that he'd beaten Rossi to the bag for the double play. From what I saw, he looked pretty safe. And this is down the third base side, and that is foul. Nice to see Brad turn on a pitch. I think some of the post-59 players just got a little wet over there. Looked like someone turned on uh, the hose or there's a leak or something. And uh, a few of the post-59 players setting, uh, sitting there got a little uh, wet here on this hot day. I don't think that's the worst thing today, though. It yeah, is send up there. the hose. Send up the hose, please. That one outside. Briefly gets away from the catcher. And the runner from second going to take off. And Rossi will be safe. The throw goes into the outfield. And Rossi's going to score. 10 nothing post 77. Rossi scores on the errant throw. Post 59's got a night game tonight at 7.30. So I might suggest they go take a dip in the pool or get out of here at this point. Rossi did advance to second as well. That one upstairs. Well, post 77 keeps scoring like this. We might still be playing at 7.30. True that. True that, Tom. The 2-1 pitch. Runner leading off of second. Back. Check in, and that is going to get into center field. Here goes Otzi over to third base with ease. And post-77 creating absolute havoc on the base paths. Not a bright play. Not a bright pay at, play at all. You're down by 10 runs and you send it in the center field. Second error of the inning for Somerset. Pass ball or wild pitch scores the runner. That one inside. Thought it would be a barn burner today, Tom. Yep, certainly not the case as Seymour will draw the walk. Runners on the corners, two outs. Obed to the plate. And what do you think the mentality is right now for Somerset leaving Solomon out there? Do you think that they're accepting their fate in this one and just trying to get as much as they can out of their starter? Second inning here? Yep. Well, he may pitch himself out of it with the number of pitches he has. This one is hit in the air to right field, battling the sun a little bit and the wind, but will make the catch. Jeremy Thibetot coming up with the catch for the third and final out of the top half of the second, but not before. Post 77 adds three more runs. It is 10-0 Ashland as we head to the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second inning, a 10-0 lead for Ashland post 77. Due up for Somerset is six, seven, and eight. Lucas Souza, the second baseman. Lucas Baraby, the third baseman, and Tim Silva, the DH. Souza steps in and awaits the pitch from Ansi. Just outside, 1-0. and Over-rotated on that one. Somerset coach said the dugouts were very cool, unlike the press box up here. Swinging strike. Hey, I'm just happy we have a press box. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than the lawn chairs? Absolutely. Swinging strike there, 1-2. and two. And also a better view, that's for sure. No question about that. Ansi got all three outs in the bottom of the first by way of the K. Looking for another one here, and he gets it. Fourth strikeout for Ansi. Nasty stuff. Lucas Baraby will step in. Do you know what their team average was this year, Tom? Somerset, Hathaway, Post? No, it was up there. I didn't see that in the uh, articles I was reading. But they certainly do have some decent offense. That look awfully good, that curveball. 1-0 and o count. 
There's a strike. Maybe that was a makeup call. Got, got the outside corner. They are hitting better than 300 as a team. Somerset. They didn't have an exact average though. Mm. One and two. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. They seem to be late on Anzi. But I think when you're down 10 nothing, Larry, it's really tough to get any offensive momentum going. And I don't know who they played to get into to this state tournament. It, the way they look now is the Little Sisters of the Poor. Upstairs. Well, I think this is just an off game right now. Which well. does tend to happen. That's why they play the games. You never know what's going to happen. As this is up the middle, that'll get into left field. And it's a base hit for Baraby. A one out base hit. And Tim Silva, the DH, will step in. Onzi better not throw over there. That kid does not have any speed whatsoever. So get the outs. Keep your pitch count low. Silva steps in. Line up and the pitch. That one low. Good block by Jewett. One and O. Oh. Runner leading off of first. Fouled away. One and one. Do you know what uh, Salmon's pitch count was for the last inning? Didn't get that information yet. As this is going to roll on the infield grass, picked up by Pesson, and he will tag first for the out. Good defensive play there. Three unassisted. Barabee moves up to second. Nice job by Onzi fielding his position. The catcher should be yelling over, over, over on anything hit to the right-hand side. Jake Meehan steps in. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the right side. That's going to get through for a base hit. Runner being waved around third. They're going to try to score. Pesson throws home. And it is the throw in time, but the tag not there in time. It is an RBI base hit for Meehan. You might want to replay that. I thought he I, got in. Yeah. I thought he tagged him. The ump, though, was looking right at it, so I'd be very shocked if he was wrong, but, man, did that look close. Camera doesn't lie. Matt Shea will step in. Runner didn't take second on the throw. 10-1 to one game now in favor of Ashland. Shea walked his last time up. Runner leading off of first. And Somerset showing off some of that offense. They did hit better than 300 as a team. And despite the lead, you just cannot take your foot off the gas. You have to keep playing out there because that one's fouled away. Is my grandmother warming up in the bullpen? Sorry about that. Yo, two. Runner leading off of first. Leg lift and the pitch. Inside and high. If Salmon threw over 24 pitches, he'd be up to 60. The next inning might be his last inning. Runner leading off of first. Ansi takes a look and deals. And that is going to hit the batter. Shea is aboard for his second time this afternoon. Meehan moves up to second, two on, two outs, one in. Jeremy Tibetot, the right fielder, to the plate. Set to deliver. Wind up and the pitch. Check swing, and it's a strike. Right at the knees. Good pitch by Ansi. Gets the sign he likes and deals. And this is a slow roller up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. Throw over to first in time. And that will wrap up the bottom half of the second. But Somerset does play to run, but still trails 10 to 1 as we head to the top of the third.
top half of the third inning. A new pitcher as expected for Somerset post 228. And the new pitcher is Brady Oliveira. A five foot 11, 155 pound right hander as Ronan Bates will step in. Excuse me, actually uh, he throws left bats right. Well, he'll only face two lefties, Rossi and Thomas. That pitch down low. Bates 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. He'll get going. I think so. And the only hitter in the lineup to not reach base as of yet. That one fouled away. One and one. Solomon certainly uh, struggling in his final pitch count. We were told it was 65. So that's a lot of pitches for two innings. Down the third base side, and that is foul. Just foul. Even though the third base umpire is standing 20 feet behind the bag, that's still the home plate umpire's call until it goes over the bag. Bates steps back in. Wind up and the pitch. Strike three. Jackson Horning to step in. I'm sure Bates will go in the dugout and inform his uh, hitting crew what this pitcher has or doesn't. Final line on the Somerset starter, Jake Solomon, was two innings pitched, 10 runs, eight of which were earned. One strikeout, three walks, one hit batter, and gave up nine hits. That one outside. Good take by Jackson. So I think it's safe to say that his uh, state tournament ERA is not looking so good. Might need a supercomputer to figure it out. <laughs> There's a strike, one and one. Oh, Watson. You got Watson here with you today? Or Siri? That's not that important. No. Horning is one for two. He singled and scored a run in the first, struck out in the second. Wind up and the pitch. Outside it goes. Looked like he was going to go for that, and he pulled his bat back. Ball was way outside. Oliveira gets the sign he likes and deals. And this is right off of Oliveira. And Horning going to try to beat it out, but will not. A good play by the second baseman to get the throw over in time. Four to three. One, now one, you check one up four on three, him. I think, Tom. All right. Did hit the pitcher, yes? That is true. Got to give him an assist. Yeah, we'll give him an assist on that one. He yeah. took it right off the leg, I believe. Yeah. That, one's, that one had a sting. Looked mm -hmm. like it went right off the shin, which is probably the most painful place to get hit. Oh, well, I could think of one other, but. Well, uh, yeah, besides the one you're thinking. Yeah. Thomas. Good play to recover <laughs> by the second baseman. That's going to. No comment on that. Drop. He'll nope. hit that one to left field, and it's caught. One, two, three, they go, much to the relief of this Somerset team. And we will head to the bottom of the third. Ashland leading 10 to 1. Bottom of the third inning, 3, 4, and 5 due up for Somerset. Devin Lynch, the first baseman, steps in. Ansi deals, and that is foul. Devin Lynch, Luke Ferrier, the catcher. Jose Martinez, the shortstop. Just had a visit from Zach Sasitsky and Alex Reynolds from Post 59. I told them to go take a nice dip in the pool. Well, there is a pool right here at Fino, just across the lot. Lots of deals. No sharks, right, Tom? I don't think so. All right. Fouled away. One and one now on Lynch. Lancy delivers outside. Two and one now. 
Well, the third inning, the top of the third, was the first inning that Post 77 did not record a run. That one low. Three and one. And there is uh, warm up action for Post 77 in case Ansi struggles once again. Looks like Tim Ringy getting loose over there in the warm up area. As this is hit in the air, foul territory out of play. That was over towards the concession stand. And I understand they really ramped up the concession stand here too. All kinds of items that they don't typically have. And of course they always do a wonderful job here at Fino Field for the Milford Post 59 games. As this is hit in the air to center field right at Seymour who will make the catch. I think they got hot dogs over there. A nice hot coffee. Maybe they have iced coffee today. Yeah, and uh, I was told for the morning game they had some breakfast sandwiches available over there. Mm. Luke Ferrier will step in. And this is the fir first time in 10 years that the state tournament has been hosted at Fino. And this is certainly in the rotation of places that I think will have the state tournament going into the future. 1 and 0 oh to Feria. Certainly one of the best establishments that I've seen for Legion baseball. Good location too. Absolutely. As that's popped up, Jewett tried to make the catch there and came to a dive but was just short. Nice attempt though. That's why I like him. He's a dirt dog for sure. Absolutely. Puts effort in uh, everything. You never really see him slacking at all. There's a nice breeze coming in. Flag's hanging still, but I feel it. Feria calls for time. Otzi deals. That one is fouled away behind the backstop. Maybe the Somerset team is having trouble picking up uh, the ball coming out of Onzi's hand with his crossfire delivery. Set to deliver. That one just outside. Onzi wanted that pitch. And Larry, I have to say too, I am a little disappointed with the post 77 fans. Turn out a lot lower than I expected. As this is hit in the air to left field, Obed battling the sun makes the catch. Sounded good off to the bat. It's not for a lack of media attention. The newspapers had covered the last two games pretty extensively. Oh, absolutely. Metro, oh. Metro West has done a great job with their coverage. Of course, we do a great job with our coverage. Absolutely. For what we get paid, we do a wonderful job. Jose <laughs> Martinez steps in. Yeah, you're well worth those zeros, Larry. I know. There's a strike. That's a strike looking. There's two down here in the top third. Oh, and one to the shortstop, two outs. That one inside turns him away. He's going for the curve there and didn't have as much as he wanted. If that was a post 77 hitter, they would just stood there and taken it. That one outside. Onzi over rotated on that pitch a little bit. That's why and I went. Coach Johnson calling for time. He's going to have a discussion with Onzi. I don't imagine he would take the ball at this point. Unless there are pitch um, count rules and he could save him. Maybe he said 55 pitches or something. Yeah, he's going to, I think, have him finish the inning. Just a discussion at the moment. Or tell him he's got so many pitches left before he's got to get out of there. Right. Coach Johnson takes the slow stroll back to the dugout. Five pitches away, we're hearing in the press box. This kid looks like he's a good athlete. Swing strike there. Stepped on that swing. Yeah, and it's only been uh, one run for Somerset, but honestly, it's certainly racked up the pitch count. A lot of battles here with these hitters. The 2-2. Two -two. There it is, strike three. Fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Ansi. 
And we will head to the top of the fourth. Post 77 leading Somerset 10 to 1 in state tournament action on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Top of the fourth inning, five, six, and seven do up for Ashland. Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. Tom Onsey, the pitcher. Tom Onsey's pitch count up at 55 after three innings of work. And we are just in the top of the fourth. A seven-run first inning for post 77. A three-run second inning. And we'll get you a recap as well of those two innings. And then Somerset, they scored a run on the bottom of the second. As this is hit in the air, a high fly ball over to left field. Should be an easy catch, and it is for Jake Meehan, one away. Pesson's been hitting the ball hard of late. Number 15, bring up Rossi, who's two for two today. A pair of singles, scored a pair of runs, and has an RBI. Yeah, he's got an open stance, too, so maybe it is a uh, teaching thing with these hitters. That one outside. Rossi will lay one down any time. Well, it's doing the trick today, that's for sure. Outside once again, 2-0. I think Oliveira's got to rely on his breaking ball because his gas doesn't have, his hose doesn't have much gas in it. Deals that one inside. Did that hit Rossi? Nope. I Behind believe it head. actually, it might have hit his bat. Hit his bat for a foul ball. Two and one. <laughs> Shook his head after that one. He wasn't thrilled. Went behind his head, so he didn't catch a break. Coming into this game, Rossi was hitting a 323 and 31 at bats on the season, 15 games played, 452 on base percentage. Three and one. And that is ball four. Rossi draws the walk. Good eye on that one. Just high. That was close. That Very. Could've, that could have went either way, I think. There's the guy in the blue shirt there behind the catcher. He calls balls and strikes. He gets paid for it, too, handsomely. Want more tips like that? You can buy Larry's baseball book. As Tom Hotsey steps in. <laughs> Just buy me a hot dog, Tom, all right? <laughs> Runner leading off of first. Got to be careful with the lefty. There's a strike. Generous outside pitch. Called strike. The 0 1. Leg left and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air, shallow right field. The second baseman ranges over and makes the catch. Two away. The Ashley and Bats have quieted down a little bit after their first two. Appearances to the plate. Sean Jouette set to step in. There's a strike. Oh, and one. Jewett doesn't have that much power, so I'm wondering whether Coach Johnson's going to send Rossi on first move. Very possible. Fouled into the backstop, 0 and 2. For those wondering, after the state tournament here at Fino Field in Milford, of course, the next round is the regional tournament over in Shrewsbury this year. Of course, post 77, hoping to be there. And right now, they're off to a 10-1 lead in the fourth inning of their first game of the state tournament, but a long way to go here at Fino before you reach that point. That and if you get to the uh, regionals, then uh, if you win that, you go to North Carolina, I think. So every player's got to pack a bag. Yep. One and two count, Shelby, North Carolina. Runner leading off of first, and this is hit up the left side, foul. One and two remains the count. 
Due up next is Brad Seymour. Shall Jouette reach? Coach Johnson flashing signs over to Rossi. He looks a little anxious over there. Time called by Jouette. Runner leading off of first. And he's taking off a swinging strike. And Jouette going to run up the line, but will not reach first. And the inning will end with the strikeout. And after three and a half, it's Ashland 10, Somerset 1. To the bottom of the fourth we go on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the fourth inning, a new pitcher for Ashland post 77. Tim Ringy takes over on the mound after Tom Ancey started and pitched the first three innings, giving up one run and two hits. Five Ks for Tom Ancey as well in this one. And it was pretty impressive out there today. Tim Ringy going to try to continue to hold this nice lead for post 77 as Lucas Souza, the second baseman, steps in. Six, seven, and eight do up for post 228. Tom Onzi's going to ride the rest of this game out in a nice, cool dugout. There's a strike. Lucas Souza, Lucas Barabee, and Tim Silva do up this inning. Ringing, he gets the sign he likes and deals. And that is a fair ball on the infield grass picked up by Rossi. Throw across, no problem. Five to three on the first out of the fourth. Saw Jewett trailing the runner there, just in case it was an errant throw. That shows me he not only knows how to play catcher, but he's doing all the fundamental things. Barabee steps in. He is one for one today. Singleton scored the only run for Somerset in the second. Scored off an RBI single by Jake Meehan. Or excuse me, Jake Simon, the pitcher. Nice breaking ball by Rinky. Didn't get a strike call, but still good nonetheless. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Let's recap the uh, first two innings for post 77. We'll do that right after this pitch. How much time do you have, Tom? I don't know. I'm going to try to do it quickly. I think I'm going to have to do it over the course of several pitches based on how many runs were scored. As this has popped up, a high fly ball in the infield grass, and it's caught by Pesson, two away. In the top half of the first, post 77, started things early and often with the bats. Obid started the inning with a walk. Bates then flew out. One on, one out. Horning hit a single, advanced on a wild pitch. Ben Thomas, two RBI single to drive in Obid and Horning as this is up the middle. Fair ball, slow roller, picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, not a problem. And we'll have to get back to the recap next inning. Six to three for the third out. And we will head to the top half of the fifth with Ashland post 77 leading Somerset 10 to one on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fifth inning, post 77 set to come back up to the plate. Due up nine, one and two, Brad Seymour, Jake Obid, Ronan Bates for Ashland. So getting back to the recap of that seven run first inning for post 77, Ben Thomas drove in the first two runs on a Two RBI base hit. Pesson was then hit by a pitch. Lewis Rossi then hit a single and a sacrifice RBI by Onsi. And then Sean Jouette, an RBI double. Brad Seymour walked. And then a two RBI double by Jake Obed to score Jouette and Seymour. And that was the seven run first inning as Brad Seymour steps in here in the fifth with Ashland up 10 to 1. Out there for his second inning of work is Brady Oliveira on the mound and he will deliver strike one. In the second inning for post 77, Jackson Horning started off with a strikeout. Ben Thomas then singled, Zach Pesson singled, an RBI single following that by Lewis Rossi, and then an RBI base hit by Tom Onsey. And then the third run would score on an errant throw that ended up in left field. 
And that made the score 10 to 1. 0 oh, and 2 on Seymour, who is 0 for 0 today as he has two walks and a run scored. 77 needs to put a couple more runs on the board and keep that 10 run differential. Right. And you're getting uh, pretty close to that now here in this uh, fifth inning. So one more run, and you could start thinking about maybe the mercy rule coming into effect. Wind up and the pitch. That is fouled off over to the parking lot behind us. Seymour, a very good defensive outfielder. Almost made a tremendous catch against Andover in the last game. Just fell out of his glove. And Tom Onsey's uh, first inning of relief, he threw six pitches. That was on the bottom of the fourth as that one is fouled away and out of play. Coach Johnson will take a six pitch inning anytime. Absolutely. And of course, if uh, post 77 wins, we'll be under the lights tomorrow night for a 7.30 p.m. first pitch. Wind up and the pitch, just outside. I told you I'm scared of the dark, didn't I? Well, then <laughs> don't come. <laughs> And that, uh, if Ashland wins, of course, they'll play the winner of Milford and Newton, which is taking place tonight. Up the third base side, that's going to get through a leadoff single for Seymour. And there is one on to start off this fifth inning. Jake Obid will step in. Oh, manager's going for the left-hander. Well, let's see if he... Yeah, it looks like, I don't know if he's going to take the ball. Yeah, now he will. So we will have a change on the mound. And with the change, we'll take a quick timeout. It's Ashland Legion State Tournament Baseball on HCAMP Television in Hopkinton and WACA-TV in Ashland. New pitcher for Somerset, their third pitcher of the game as Jake Obid steps in and he is set to face Joseph Dupree, who is a right-hander. Runner leading off of first. Up the third base side and off the third baseman. That was a hard hit ball and Obid is aboard. I don't know, Larry, what do you think? Error hit? Error. I mean, I like yeah. Jake and all that. Love to see his batting average go up, but Third baseman should have had it. I agree, but that was a very hard hit ball as Bates will step in. Well, score it anyway. We'll give, we'll give him a single then. Yeah, why not? All right. I'll give him the error. <laughs> You're right. Hit high in the air to left center and ranging over to make the catch is Jake Meehan. One away with two on. Jackson Horning, the shortstop to step in. One for three at the plate. Singled in the first and scored a run on the two RBI single by Ben Thomas. Now the number five, Jackson Both runners leading. Wind up and the pitch. Some nasty know, movement Tom. there, but inside, and that'll make the count one and oh. I think that the Somerset has had the... Uh, their oxygen sucked out of them. Oh, I'd say so after that first inning. It's really tough to rebound from giving up seven runs in the top of the first. But of course, it's game not over yet. Both runners leading. That one outside. Good stop by Feria. I, I love the fact, though, that post-77, they really have not taken their foot off the gas at all. They are playing this game as if it was a two-to-one ball game. Wind up and the pitch. Up the third base side. That'll get through. That is a fair ball. Coming around to score another run is Brad Seymour. And it is an 11-to-one ball game. 
An RBI hit for Horning, who ends up at second base, so bid to third. Well, some have said is missing their cutoffs, which they weren't doing in infield, outfield earlier. Ben Thomas steps in. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the first base side and foul. Don't forget, you can follow Ashland Legion Baseball on hcam.tv or the HCAM Facebook and Twitter page. And of course, WACA TV also has a nice Twitter and Facebook page as well. That one filed away. Oh, and two is the count on Thomas. I'm looking for him to drive one. Runners on second and third, one out. And that is ball one. Two up next is Zach Pesson. Ben Thomas, two for three today. Two RBIs, a pair of single, and also two stolen bases. And this is a fair ball right side and a tough play to make, but he will. It is going to be a sacrifice RBI, however, for Ben Thomas. As Obid comes around to score the 12th post-77 run of the afternoon, Jackson Horning over to third. Four unassisted on that, Tom. Thank you. Zach Pesson will step in. Yeah, there was a number of players in the area. I wasn't sure if it was the first baseman, pitcher, or second baseman who picked up that ball. That one just outside, 1-0. Oh. That's why we have you, Larry. Right, I mean, the <laughs> shortstop, Souza there. Had all the momentum going towards first, so we just continued on. Right. That one low. Two and O oh to Pesson, who's also having a pretty good day at the plate. One for two, was hit by a pitch in the first, and he scored two runs today. One in the first, one in the second. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. And coming in to this game, 237 batting average for Pesson. That's fouled off. Bet if we had the splits, first half or second half, he'd be hitting 400 in the second half. Oh, absolutely. He's been on a hot streak lately. 408 on base percentage. Three RBIs, seven runs scored. Down the third base side, foul. That's an error on Coach Johnson. He should have had that ball. <laughs> Coach Johnson does play a good amount of softball in his spare time. Keeping his uh, baseball skills up to date. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs on the breaking ball. Three and two. Two more runs in this inning, four post 77. It's now a 12-1 lead. And that is outside, Pesson draws the walk. Joseph Dupree racking up the pitches this inning. Louis Rossi, the third baseman, will step in. Do you think Coach Johnson has got it in his mind to try that suicide squeeze, squeeze again with Rossi? I wouldn't, I'd let him swing away considering he's two for two today with a walk. I think you just let him uh, see if he can continue this momentum at the plate. There's a strike. No signs of him sticking the bat out. Rossi also has an RBI. That came in the second inning. Drove in the first of three that inning as Thomas scored on his hit. And the runner from first is going to take off to second, so Pesson with the easy steal. 0 oh for 2 the count, 0 oh and 2 the count on Rossi. And this is right up the middle, past the reach of the pitcher, and that is going to be gloved by the shortstop, throw over to first, no problem. They do get the third out of the inning, but two more runs in for Ashland post 77, and it is a 12-1 to lead as we head to the bottom of the fifth on HCAM Television or WACA TV in Ashland.
Bottom of the fifth inning, a 12 to one lead for Ashland post 77. Wind up and the pitch outside. It's Tim Ringy out there for his second inning of work. Got out of the fourth, one, two, three. And on six pitches, that one is low. Two and O oh to Jake Meehan. It's nine, one, and two for Somerset. Jake Meehan, Matt Shea, and Jeremy Tibbetot. Wind up and the pitch. Up the right side, glove by the first baseman. We'll flip it over to Ringy and some good defensive work there. And you could score that one a three to one, one away. That was nice. Besson led Ringy to the bag and he beat the runner to the bag. And that's when you know you have a well coached defense when a pitcher knows what to do in that situation. As Shea steps in. One and oh. Ringy gave a long look into the umpire thinking that was a strike. Umpires don't like that. Eye rolling, stares. Nope, you won't get the benefit of the doubt doing that. That's fouled away. One and one. Ringy set to deal. And this is a liner that'll drop into left field, a little blooper, and that is a one-out base hit. Ashland's been playing straight up. No shading so far. Jeremy Tibbetot steps in. 0 for 2 today for Tibbetot. That one is low. Good stop by Jewett. I don't think Somerset can afford to run in out at any point from here on in. Runner leading off of first. Monsey from the stretch. Deals a strike. One and one. Excuse me, Ringy. <laughs> Down the third base side, and that is going to take an awkward hop past Rossi. And it is a single, single for yeah. Tibbetot. I was getting there. <laughs> Shea up to second. Uh, that third base line has been uh, haunting Rossi all season long. Devin Lynch steps in. Both runners leading, two on, one out. Ringy deals a strike. Slow breaking pitch. Have a little warm up activity in the Ashland bullpen. Yep. It's been a extended inning for Ringy as this is hit into left field. An easy catch for Obid. Everybody will stay put. A great throw in by Obid as well over to second base to keep Shea there. He wasn't going anywhere, so that was. Uh, of a dangerous throw. The ball sailed into the outfield. Luke Ferrier to step in. You got two down here, right? Yep. It looks like Jonathan Pesson getting loose for post 77. Wind up and the pitch. That one low. If he can get two out of Ringy. And three out of Onzi got already, and bring in Pesson for a couple. Could save all his arms. Right. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air. That'll drop into left center. Runner, runner being waved around third. The throw home is off the mark. And now a good throw to third, but not in time by Jouette as he was trying to get 
Thibitot who was heading to the bag. It is an RBI single for Feria. He advanced to second on the throw. And it is a 12 to two game now. Jose Martinez steps in. Coming into this game, Ringy pitched 10 innings this season for post 77 and had a 4.20 ERA. Or excuse me, a 2.80 ERA. Just looking at the, the Pesson ERA there for a minute. And uh, giving up eight runs, four of which were earned. So pretty good line for Ringy, who has mostly pitched in relief this season for post 77. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the middle it goes. Slow roller picked up by Horning. Throw to first, not a problem. A little grass is, cutter there. Yeah, he's able to get the final out of the inning. 12 to 2 is the score as we head to the sixth on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the sixth inning, a 12 to 2 lead for Ashland Post 77. As Ringy steps into the batter's box and takes one outside. 1 and 0. Oh. He's in there replacing Onzi. 222 batting average on the season. Only nine at bats. And he takes that one for the team. And we will have the lead runner on for post 77 as he is hit by the pitch. That one really got away from the pitcher. Hit him on the numbers, but straight on, not his back. It's the first time being hit by the pitch this season. Sean Jewett steps in, ringing leading off of first. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside, 1-0. Joseph Dupree out there for another inning of work. Came in in relief in the fifth after Brad Seymour singled. Check in, runner slides back safe. And Seymour ended up scoring a run on the RBI hit by Jackson Horning. That run was actually charged to Oliveira, who was the second reliever. Wind up and the pitch. That one low. Nice stop by Faria. I don't think Ringy is going to go anywhere, especially if he's going to go out and pitch the bottom of the sixth inning. I don't think so. Never know, though. That one upstairs. 2-0. and I've learned that Coach Johnson's uh, base path coaching is unpredictable. 3-0 pitch to Jewett. There's strike one. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. Good throw up the line by Faria. Don't want to waste any extra energy over there, Mr. Ringy. This game uh, was well it four past, hours old? Well past the two hour mark now for sure. But a 12.35 start, we're now at 2.42 in the sixth inning as there's a strike to fill up the count on Jewett. And of course, much of that time was taken up by the seven run first inning for Ashland. Checking at first, runner slides back just safe. Dupree is aware of uh, Ringy over there, but Johnson may send Ringy a 3-2 count to just prave a no line drive right at somebody. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. And Johnson trying to make the catch there. Unable to. Got to give him the error on that uh, one, Larry. Yeah, absolutely. He can't hide from that. It's on film. <laughs> Set to deal is Dupree. Runner leading off of first. He's taking off. This is up the middle, slow roller picked up by the shortstop, throw to first in time. But Ringy did advance to second. Jewett goes down six to three. 
the throw was up the line. First baseman made a nice play to catch it and tag Jewett as he went by. Brad Seymour steps in. Runner leading off of second. Wind up and the pitch. And therefore a strike. 12 to two lead for post 77. Here in this top of the sixth inning, of course the state tournament games are nine innings. Unless of course there is a mercy, which we believe is a 10 run lead after seven. And I'm begging for one of those. It must be 100 degrees in this press box. Oh yeah, it's certainly uh, pretty hot. Swing strike there. Good change up. One and two. I'll be heading to the studio after this to get these highlights up. Wind up and the pitch outside. Good block by Ferrier. Two and two on Seymour. Good thing about the studio, though, it's nice and air conditioned, so I don't mind. Uh, okay. My car's nice and air conditioned. <laughs> and there is strike three. Got him looking. Seymour did not like that call. Two away. Ashley wants that run back, so. Jake Obid steps in. He's the guy to do it. This is the fifth at bat for Obid. Fifth plate appearance as that one's upstairs. So far today, he was hit by a pitch, had a two RBI double, flew out and reached on an error. And he reached on the error in the fifth and scored the second run of that inning for post 77. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the third base side, off the glove of Baraby. And that is going to allow another post-77 run to score. As Ringy comes around, Obed reaching on the error. And I don't think there's any doubt about that one being an error. You're a tough scorer. <laughs> but it was a uh, good piece of hitting that did the trick as Ronan Bates will step in. We'll have to check with the official scorer over to our right to see oh, what he... Right off his glove. I mean, that's when you got a snag. 13-2 now is the score. Ever since post-77 replaced Obit in the leadoff spot and moved Jackson Hornung down to the three spot, they've been averaging more runs per game. Obit in the leadoff spot today. As that one will get by off the backstop it goes. Obit up to third on the wild pitch. Barry has been having a difficult time with anything in the dirt, anything that bounces up, but he's making all the blocks when they get when the ball gets past the plate. Bates struggling a little bit at the plate today. The only hitter in the lineup not to reach base for Ashland. 0 for 4. 232 on the season, 357 on base percentage. That one outside. Two and one. Leg lift and the pitch. That one low. Great afternoon to come down to Fino Field and check out some state tournament Legion baseball. Certainly can't ask for better weather than this. As there is a strike. Loads Full up count the count, now. yeah. Runner leading off of third. The wind up and the pitch. Up the left side, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, and it is in time. That will be the third and final out of the inning. A great play by Jose Martinez, but post 77 does plate another run. It is 13 to two, Ashland, as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning. Six, seven, and eight do up for Somerset. A 13 to two lead for Ashland post 77. As this is popped up, foul territory right side, and Jewett makes the, did he make the catch? No. Nope. No, it fell out of his glove. He almost had it, but it just fell out of his glove. Oh, and one. 
Nice attempt, though, by the catcher. And I was told that was also out of place, so even if he did make the catch, it wouldn't matter. As that is popped up in the air, and this should be no problem for Ring. He had to battle the sun a little bit, but makes the catch. That'll bring up Lucas Barabee, the third baseman. One out. As Barabee steps in. Ringy set to deal. That one is low. One and oh. Popped up right side. Foul territory out of play. Off the dugout it goes. Good hustle by Pesson and Jewett. Even though the score is 13 to 2, they need outs. They certainly do. Try to get out of this uh, with a nice mercy. That'd be a great way to uh, start off the state tournament. Set to deal. That one low, briefly got away from Jewett. Ashley and Post 77 pitchers are uh, notoriously quick between pitches. Get the ball and throw it. Barabee awaits the pitch. Bringy deals. Outside. Three and one. Right up and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air to center field. Seymour ranging over and will make the catch two away. Obid ran a long way for that one, but it was Brad Seymour's ball all the way. Tim Silva steps in, the DH, 0 for 2 today. Ringy set to deal. Outside. 1 and 0. Oh. Well, if we do end up playing tomorrow night, it won't be so oppre oppressive in the press box here. Certainly will not. As that, this is going to be off the glove of Horning, who bobbled it a little bit, tried to get the throw across, but it's not in time. Silver reaches on the error. First error of the game for four seventy-seven. Jake Mean will step in. Well, you're not giving that one an error? He well, he went him. way, way in the hole on a slow hit ground ball. Even if he fielded it cleanly, I think he would have had a single on that. But We'll see what the official score says. As this is hit in the air right center, Seymour ranges over and makes the catch for the third and final out of the bottom of the sixth. To the top of the seventh we go. Ashland leading Somerset 13-2 here at Fino Field in Milford. Ashland post 77 set to come back up to the plate here on the top of the seven, three, four, and five do up. Jackson Horning, Ben Thomas, and Zach Pesson wind up and the pitch by Dupree, and that one is in there for a strike, 0 oh and 1. Dupree came in in relief in the fifth inning, and he has since been charged with a pair of runs, but actually no, both runs were unearned. So no runs given up officially for Dupree. Wind up and the pitch. Up the left side and that will get through the gap between the shortstop and third baseman for the base hit. 
A single for Jackson Horning and a lead off the seventh. Ben Thomas will step in. I don't know whether it's rubbing it in at this point, but Jackson Horning is blessed with great speed. Thomas awaits the pitch, takes strike one. Thomas having a nice day at the plate. Two for three, but also has a sacrifice RBI in the fifth. And we'll put this one up the right side. Glove by the second baseman, turns around, gets the out at second base. Thomas reaches on the four to six force out. Zach Pesson will step in. One on, one out. Pesson is one for two. He was also hit by a pitch and walked. He has scored two runs. And we'll hit this one in the air to left field. That'll drop down. That's a fair ball. Pesson going to round first base. His helmet falls off as he heads the second. And it is a stand-up double for Zach Pesson. Ben Thomas moving up to third. Two on, one out. Lewis Rossi to the plate with a pair of runners in scoring position. Will he or won't he? Is that Bush to lay a suicide down? Right down the first baseline? Yeah, you never know. Infield is in. Rossi two for three at the plate, also walked. That one outside, one and oh. Somerset gonna try and cut the runner down at the plate. They're all, all in, all the way around. Line up and the pitch. Down the first base side, past the dive of the first baseman, and that is a foul ball. Very close call. Yep. Bench would have erupted had that been fair. Oh, yeah. And that would have scored a pair of runs as well. Both runners on base leading off. Breaking pitch upstairs. Two and one on Rossi. 77's got some bullpen action. There's a strike. Trevor DePeron. They might bring him in next inning to close it out. Oh no, my mistake. That one inside, it gets away. Dylan O'Leary down there. No harm done as Faria quickly tracks it down. Three and two, full count on Rossi. Two runners on, one out. Wind up and the pitch. Up the right side, it'll get through the gap. One run is in to score. And that is all that will score as Thomas comes around, but they will take it. An RBI single for Lewis Rossi. Ben Thomas was moving on that pitch, so Rossi had to make contact. But ben would have been out at the plate for sure. Pesson now at third base. So it's runners on the corners, one out. And you got Tim Ringy at the plate. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one. Tim Ringy, of course, at a Holliston High School. Fouls that one away. Coming into this game, only nine at bats, so getting some good plate experience here. This is second at bat of the game. He reached on being hit by a pitch last inning and scored the only run of the inning for post 77. That one outside. By a mile. And Coach Johnson has just put the brakes on here. Hopefully Dylan O'Leary after this inning can close things out. Fouled away. A 14 to two lead for Ashland post 77. Seven runs in the first, three runs in the second. Two in the fifth, one in the sixth, and one so far in the seventh. To 
Bree from the stretch. Deals. Outside, it gets away from the catcher. Pesson going to try to score the throw over. Gets away from Dupree, and Pesson will score the 15th Ashland post-77 run of the afternoon. So gets home on the pass ball, and it is a 15-2 lead. Unbelievable. Rossi's in scoring position. Yeah, Rossi moving up to second. And things for Somerset just not going well at all. Dupree is uh, waved over to the dugout. Yeah, I think he might be coming out. Or he wants out. I wonder if this is the uh, pitch count rules coming into effect, but let's see if he is coming out. He's no, so far just a discussion. Yeah, he's stretching his arm out a little bit. Maybe he hurt his elbow. Yep. Oh, yeah, they're checking. Yeah, that's a good point. Looks like they're checking up on him. The ump breaking up the conference. Maybe we'll give him a few uh, <laughs> courtesy tosses. The ump did not give him long to talk, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Dupree did motion to the dugout, and the manager popped up. Popped out, excuse me. Probably just needed a breather. It's been a uh, extended inning, rough inning for Dupree. I think we're entitled to a libation or two after this ball game. <laughs> <laughs> the 2-2. Hit in the air to left center, and it will be caught in center field by Matt Shea. Two away. I'll bring up Sean Jouette. Nice cozy 13 run lead when we head to the, or at least a 13 run lead he heading into the bottom of the seventh. And I believe that will be the final half inning if 077 is able to hold the lead 10 or above. One and O, oh. two Jouette, one for four at the plate, had an RBI double in the first. Up the left side, and that is ripped foul. One and one. Farabee made a dive at it. If that one was fair, that would have been another easy run for post 77. Next team, Northampton, who's playing Barnstable this afternoon. Yep. It's sort of an equal distance sort of thing. No one, no team can complain that they had the longer drive, but they've arrived, Northampton. One and two. Hit in the air over to left center. That's going to drop down for a base hit. Here comes another post-77 run. The throw in is not in time, and Lewis Rossi comes around for the third Ashland run of the inning. And it is now a 16 to two lead. An RBI single for Sean Jewett. Manager's going out for a second trip. Yeah. Whether this is an official trip or not. Yeah, he's taking the ball. Dupree is going to come out of the game. He was hoping that he would get out of the inning, but it won't happen. He's gonna bring in Jake Mean, it looks like, to pitch. The left fielder. So we will have a new pitcher and left fielder for Somerset. We'll get you updated on that when we get back from a short break. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Fourth pitcher of the afternoon for Somerset. They bring in Jake Meehan from left field to take over. And then they move Joseph Dupree, who was the last pitcher, over to left field. Brad Seymour steps in. A pretty comfortable lead for post-77 as they are up 16 to two. Oh, and one count, two outs, one on. Sean Jouette over at first base. And all the starters have remained in this game for Ashland, besides the pitcher, of course. That one outside. Well, Dylan O'Leary will have at least four runs to work with. That's a, r a lot of runs based on the way this team is hitting. Yeah, Jake Ovid is over there on deck, so he's staying in the game. I don't think anyone wants to come out of this game. 
Hit in the air, a high fly ball over to center field. Backpedaling and making the catch is Mac Shea. And that is going to wrap up the top half of the seventh. But post 77 adds some security as they play another three runs in the inning. It is 16 to 2 as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Ashland Allegiant State Tournament Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera. Ashland Legion Baseball and HCAM Television in Hopkinton and WACA TV in Ashland. And so far, everything is going Ashland's way. 16 to 2 on the bottom of the seventh as this is hit up the middle. Slow roller on the grass. No problem for the second baseman, Ronan Bates. 4 to 3 goes Shea. One away in the bottom of the seventh, which we believe is the final inning. As long as, of course, Ashland is able to hold the lead 10 or above. As Tibetot steps in. And actually, we have a uh, pinch hitter for Tibetot who will pop it up over to shallow center field, and that'll drop in for a base hit, a one out single. And the hitter was Jacob Rebello. And that'll bring up Devin Lynch, the first baseman. So I think it's pretty safe to say that Ashland more than likely is going to get this victory. So it appears that Ashland will be playing Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. scheduled start time under the lights here at Fino. Well, Somerset will be back here at 12.30 tomorrow. A little bloop shot, gloved by the second baseman, steps on the second base back for one, throw over to first off the mark, but he is able to get the force out, two away. Got the lead runner, Sean Jewett, hustling down the first baseline. Yep. Four to three, force out, and that'll bring up Luke Feria. The four unassisted force out over at second base. Two outs. Ringy trying to finish this one out. Fouled away. And this is the fourth inning of work for Ringy. He actually pitched more innings than the starter, Tom Ansi. Line up in the pitch. Fouled away. 0 and 2. I believe uh, from talking with Coach Johnson, he's going to start Sean Babineau tomorrow against the winner of Newton and Milford. Yep. It'll be a great game either way. Of course, what a great local matchup it would be if it ends up being Milford, who we wish the very best of luck to tonight as they will take on Newton. A lot of Hopkinton Hillers on that Milford Post 59 team. And this is hit high in the air to shallow right field, ranging under it to make the catch is Ronan Bates for the out. And that is going to do it for the bottom of the seventh. And this game, Ashland post 77, pulls off the 16 to two mercy ruled victory over Somerset. And they will play Sunday night under the lights in the winner's bracket against the winner of Milford and Newton. Seven run rally in the first, a three run rally in the second, two more in the fifth, a run in the sixth, three more in the seventh. Four post 77, 16 runs on 13 hits, one error committed. Somerset had two runs on six hits, three errors committed. The winning pitcher, Tom Ansi, who went three innings, giving up one run, two hits, he had five Ks, and of course, Tim, Ringy had a uh, very good performance on the mound as well, but Ashland post 77 grabs the victory over Somerset 16 to two, and they are one and zero oh in the state tournament. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sackland, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this Ashland Legion baseball broadcast. Take care everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.